it's Adele from Let's Get Inky and today we're doing a bit of a different video just like we did yesterday on my Inky Quill channel. Uh, I thought to end the Inky June Marathon we'd do something a bit different and today I'm going to talk about my most must-have, most essential supplies for art journaling and of course this is subjective, everybody art journals in a different way. Uh, like I said in yesterday's video on Inky Quill. Uh, it just depends on your style and what you enjoy using, what you have access to, uh, and you don't need all of the things to start off art journaling. I think that's something that I get, I get a lot of questions about it. I think that's something that a lot of people feel like they need every type of medium, or if they pick a type of medium like acrylic paint, they need every single color of acrylic paint. You don't. Just start off with a few basic colors, the primary colors or your favorite colors and go from there. Uh, so I wanted to show you my favorites and let's jump into it, shall we? This is a warning. If you've stumbled upon, upon my channel, we may have some tangents and some kind of squirrel moments. My baby's asleep. She might wake up at some point. My three-year-old's due to come home in half an hour. So we'll see how this video goes. <laughs> All right, let's jump into it. So first of all, I think if you're going to be art journaling, you need some sort of journal, something to put the things in. And art journaling, I feel like, encompasses such a broad range of journal paper textures and journal sizes and journal types that there's no one perfect journal for every single person. So if you are new to art journaling, I would suggest starting off with a, a cheaper journal or make your own one. Uh, I'll show you a few that I have worked in or am working in and you can see if any of those appeal to you. Uh, but yeah, you don't need a $50 journal to start off with. And my one, my number one tip for anyone starting with art journaling is don't start on the first page because I did that when I started and I have friends who have done that and you start the first page. Sometimes you get to the second page and then you're like, no, nah, I don't like it. So I would just whip it open to the middle, crack open a page in the middle, and then I feel like there's more chance of you finishing uh, the journal. So I, I have a pile of journals next to me. <laughs> so what do we start with first? Probably my personal favorite journal to work in is a junk journal. Uh, now there's lots of interpretations of junk journals. Some people stick junk in them, so packaging, stickers, um, things that they would normally throw out. Other people use scrapbooking paper to create them. Uh, I kind of do a bit of a hybrid, I would say, a bit of both, but they're completely whatever you want them to be. Uh, so this is a book that uh, I made. And I know peeps, if you're an OG inklet, you're like, Adele, where's the junk journal class? Coming. I filmed one three years ago, <laughs> and then I didn't do the 14 hours of voiceover that it needed. And then I thought about it too long and I overthought it and I thought it was bad. So I'm gonna refilm it. I will, it's this year's job. Later, towards Christmas, maybe a Christmas present to yourselves. Uh, but yes, I will have a junk journal class. I don't have a video online showing how I make this, but there are so many of my process videos on my channel if you want more information. So this one, peeps, she's done. She's all done. And I am so excited. So you can see I have a bit of a eclectic style there's usually bright colors involved there's usually sometimes there's types of flaps sometimes there's photos it's basically just like a little hodgepodge of color and all sorts of bits and pieces so uh, this is one size this is probably my favorite size journal other junk journals that I've worked in uh, I made this little one she's a chunker she's Oh, she's upside down. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, she took a while to do. Um, but that's another one. There is a flip through for this one on my channel. There will be for this one shortly in the next few months. Uh, this is another one that I've finished. This has just turned into a jug journal video. Um, this one was my first one and it was really fun to make and kind of ex experiment with. And the front cover is literally just scrapbook paper. It's it's nothing special with that one. And then I've got my little one. There is a flip through of this as well. This is my uh, 100 day project where I wrote a letter every single day to my son. 
and I will be doing the same thing for uh, Violet when she turns one as well, my little girl. And there's a full flip through and process videos and stuff for that if you want to see more. Other journal sizes that you could work with. So junk journals are where every page is kind of different. It's, um, I use paper, I use magazine papers, I use painted papers, I use scrapbook paper, I use note paper, a bit of everything. You can also buy just a normal uh, white journal. So this is a Jane Davenport one. And this is all not sponsored at all. I should add that. Not sponsored, not gifted. I bought everything that I'm talking about with my own money. <laughs> or subscribers have sent me like tissue paper and things like that. But um, yeah, not sponsored. Uh, so this is, the pages are just white. And then I've just journaled over the top. Uh, this is a similar size, so this is a Dilutions Creative Journal, and this is, I think it's an A5 size, thereabouts, and this is my Use It Up journal, uh, which I really love. So if you are going to start art journaling, art journaling, start with one journal, and then if you really like it, oh, I love this page, uh, I would suggest getting a second one that you can use as a use it up journal which is where whenever I'm using paint if I've got spare paint I just slap it in that spare journal or if I'm using a stencil I will whip open a page in this and stencil on this page as well so that I'm getting two backgrounds kind of for the price of dirtying the stencil once if that makes sense. Uh, other journal sizes you could go for something that's a bit bigger so this was if you watched my channel You'll know I have a love-hate relationship with this journal. <laughs> uh, this was a Dina Wakeley journal, which is beautiful, but I love the size and I love how thick the borders are, but the um, there's different textures in there. There's craft, there's burlap, and all sorts of other textures which I did struggle with a little bit uh, so I think but it's all about experimenting I wouldn't suggest getting a journal with lots of different tricky textures to start off with um, because it can be a bit frustrating <laughs> oh we have a crafter lunch I think that'll be all right uh, and then I, I could keep showing you journals, but there's all different shapes and sizes depending on what you like. And then you could go into the Traveller's Notebook world because they're still journals. So this is my little Traveller's Notebook. Um, I wouldn't call... I, I don't use my Traveller's Notebooks for art journaling as such. I see this more as journaling. But it depends on what your definition of art journaling is. Uh, it is art journaling, I guess. I don't know. Definitions. Who knows? Uh, but Traveller's Notebooks are a great size. I've got this one here. Uh, if you want to experiment with a small scale because it's just a, a smaller page to work with. And then um, you can yeah, have a go, do whatever you like in them. So I hope that's given you some ideas for journal types. Right, next up, a thing that I find very handy, uh, personally, is gesso. I slap it on everything. <laughs> I Gesso acts as a primer uh, to your page, and it's really handy if you are working with a paper that's a little bit more porous, that's going to suck in your watery mixed media, like watercolour and inks and that type of thing. Uh, or even pens uh, so the gesso can come in big bottles like this but it can also come in small ones definitely start off with a small one if you can uh, I have white and I have clear and I use them for different things I really like clear gesso when I'm working in my junk journals because sometimes I want the base page to be seen uh, and I want to be able to see you know that the notebook paper background or uh, maybe I've done a bit of a painted background and I just want to put a bit of gesso over the rest of the paper I use white gesso a lot particularly in these journals because they're a bit more of a creamy page and I prefer a crisp 
white page to work off with just because I feel like the colors pop a bit more uh, so I would start off with white or um, or you could start off with clear and see how you go see if you like it I find clear gesso a lot grittier so just be prepared your paper isn't going to feel as smooth as it once did uh, it does make it a bit gritty and that's because it's making it so it's priming the page so that other mediums that you put on top can like stick to the page a little bit better clear gesso is really handy if you are working over the top of glossy magazine images or maybe vintage book pages that are a bit fragile uh, but yes they both have their own purposes if you want more talk about gesso let me know then as for other mediums there's so many out there <laughs> and like I said everyone's different in the way that they art journal I feel like I oh another crafter lanch <laughs> I feel like I have two main other gesso uh, other mediums that I like um, for me I cannot I very rarely do a page without matte gel medium so matte gel medium is a gel medium that is matte it's not glossy and you can get gloss gel medium as well uh, I use this as a adhesive so if I'm sticking down collage items like tissue paper serviettes napkins whatever you may call them uh, painted papers magazine papers washi tape I use matte gel medium as an adhesive and then I also put it over the top as like a bit of a top coat it does mattify is that a word mattify makes your stuff matte not shiny so if you put it over the top of a magazine image um, it loses that glossness uh, lots of technical words here in this video peeps <laughs> <laughs> uh, so matte gel medium is really handy I buy a lot of Liquitex just because it's the thing that I can get easiest around me and I like it so if it's not broke don't fix it uh, so that's I would say a must-have if you like collaging and then the other medium that I really love is texture paste or modeling paste or molding paste it's all very similar names uh, so I use the flexible modeling paste from Liquitex because it's it's thick enough but it's not too thick I've had some before that are really thick and then I've had others that are too thin and don't hold their form um, I love to use this through stencils and be warned it does of course because it's texture paste it's it's a thick paste and it will add bulk to your journals so for example my most recent uh, junk journal I wanted to keep her a bit thin uh, as opposed to her previous version you can see the the difference there this one has texture paste in it and a few more pages oh no they pretty much have the same amount of pages I think uh, this one does not so it it can bulk up uh, your journal quite a bit but it's fun to play with and you don't need a big tub as well this lasts for ever <laughs> while we're talking mediums and like matte gel medium for sticking things down let's talk adhesives because it and it all it really does depend on how you art journal and if you use your art journal for just drawing things then you won't need adhesives if you're not going to stick anything in then you don't need stuff to stick it in with uh, but I'm just talking about my personal ones like I said and um, things to think about if you want to start art journaling but don't know what you need uh, so one of my favorite adhesives to use in my art journal is just a, a humble old glue stick but a good branded one not a cheapy one because the cheapy ones make everything fall off and it's there's no point uh, so find yourself a good glue stick I like this one because it's blue so it goes on blue so you can see where you've put the glue and then it dries clear so I find a glue stick very handy and the other thing that I love is um, double-sided tape and I find that handy if I have a page that I'm sticking maybe a stiffer background texture to so if I'm sticking some scrapbook paper to it or some thicker painted paper that I've done on watercolor paper I'll use this rather than the glue stick because this holds things a bit stronger uh, they're probably my two favorite glues a wet glue as well so the ooh, where is it here it is the wet glue that I use is uh, Scotch quick drying tacky glue it dries clear but I don't use this as much in journals because I find that it's a bit too wet and sometimes it can make my pages warp a little bit 
Then another vital thing, if you are using your art journal to stick things in and chop things up, uh, scissors. So these are my scissors of choice. They're giant. If you watched yesterday's Inky Quill video, you would have seen them make an appearance there as well. Uh, so scissors, I think, are something really important. These ones I get questions about all the time. They're from Officeworks. I bought them about 12 years ago when I started teaching and I haven't been able to find them since. The brand is L-E-D-A-H, Leader, I think. Uh, I haven't been able to find them since, but they're freaking huge and they're really handy for chopping stuff quickly. Then, while we're on the thought of tools, uh, brushes are something that I use a lot because I do use a lot of paints in my journals and I think it's very easy to get overwhelmed with brushes and buying expensive brushes or buying brushes in lots of different sizes and shapes and I, I, I am guilty of having a lot of brushes but I really find myself using two main brushes. Uh, maybe, no, let's go four. Four main brushes. Uh, so the first one is a thick, wide, flat brush. I find this really handy for adding a lot of background colour. Uh, if I'm using watercolour and I just want a big watercolour-y background, I can use this to just put on all of the paint. I'm not a watercolour technical person, so that's probably watercolour professionals are looking at this going that is the definite wrong brush to use with watercolor uh, but I love to use this for backgrounds because you can just get a whole lot of paint on quickly I also have oh she's a bit stiff uh, I also have a gesso specific brush now this is something that I learned about the hard way don't be like me <laughs> Uh, gesso and matte gel medium can stuff your brushes up and it makes the bristles go a little bit frayed apart and it just makes everything a bit stiff and dusty uh, so I would get a nice wide brush that you can just save for gesso and uh, modeling paste this one I think I picked up from an art shop for maybe five bucks or so but my previous one which sadly died because I left gesso in it and didn't put it in water. Uh, I picked up in a pack for five dollars from my local cheap shop and or Spotlight. I think I got it from Spotlight. And um, yeah, so gesso specific brush. There are brushes. Let's see if I got one. There are some brushes that are designed specifically for that, but really I think you just need a flat big brush that's handy. And then a brush like this is also very handy. So this has got more of a tapered point. It's not as, I can do the beauty guru thing. Ooh. Uh, it's not as wide as the other brush. And this is really handy for splatters. And also if you wanted to do some more detailed designs. And I do have these in a couple of different uh, sizes. Also a water jar. This is an old spice jar, I think. Uh, and I like to have two jars of water going at the same time. And the reason for that is slightly lazy. <laughs> Sometimes, well, if I'm using watercolour, I uh, say if I'm using black or dark blue or purple, some sort of dark colour, and I put my paintbrush into the water, the water immediately turns that colour, right? So then if I go to then get yellow from my watercolour palette, it's going to look like a dingy yellow. It's going to look a bit murky. Uh, so it's handy to have two cups of water because you can wash your brush in one and then pick up the water from the clean water one to make sure that your colours stay nice and vibrant. Uh, so I do have two around. It's also very handy if you're lazy or you film like I do and you don't want to change your water that frequently because when one gets dirty, you go, oh, here's one I prepared earlier and you start using the other one. <laughs> Alrighty. So, looking at my list, we're still on tools. <laughs> uh, next up, makeup sponges are something that are really handy if you like using stencils or if you like a bit of a splotchy look in the background. So, I picked up a cheap bag of makeup stencils from Kmart uh, here in Australia and I cut them into halves or quarters as well. And you can wash them uh, and reuse them multiple times like I do. 
uh, they're very very handy and there are lots of different tools that you can attach sponges to and use them they are great for inking as well uh, but if you're starting off or if you haven't tried stencils before makeup sponges work great and they're a lot cheaper then while we're on tools a spatula or a paint knife is very handy now my good one is my three-year-old son's most favorite possession of mummies that he likes to uh, sneak in and grab from my craft room and I can't find it which means that it's somewhere else in the house and I need to go looking for it he likes to use it as a baseball bat which is just it's lovely uh, so this one you, you can buy them individually or this came in a pack from Eckersley's uh, might have been about 15 or so dollars for maybe four or five of them all different shapes and sizes I use this for texture paste uh, if I'm putting texture paste through a stencil or sometimes if I want to have a different type of effect in the background I just use it to move acrylic paint across my page uh, so one of these is handy if you can pick one up you can pick one up nice and cheap and uh, it's a great tool to have in your arsenal next up do, 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 do. all right some sort of thing to protect your work surface now I can't really talk because a lot of the time I just art channel straight onto my desk. My desk these days is looking a little bit colourful but it's very handy to have some sort of mat. If you don't want to grab a mat even just some A3 paper or some newspaper something to put on your work surface so that when you accidentally splatter too much like I do <laughs> it saves it a bit. Uh, so I have a few different messy mats as I call them or is it, is it brand, one of the brands maybe have a messy mat I don't know uh, this one's from Ranger I need to clean it and it's nice it's it's brown which isn't really my color but it's nice it does the job and it's a good size and it's because it's so thin it's really handy to uh, take away if I'm going to a crop and then this one's a little bit more substantial but I think these are discontinued someone told me uh, this is the Heidi Spot one. So these are very handy and they both need desperate cleaning. But before that I would just use uh, like A3 sized pieces of white paper and I'd put them down and before I started to use it up journal if I was ever doing something with paint I would just smush it on the paper as well and then eventually my paper gets so painted that I can then use it on an art journal page. Next up something that i sometimes forget if i go traveling um, but i should remember is waxed paper now this stuff you've probably got it in your kitchen baking paper waxed paper some sort of paper that's a bit waxy and i love to use this as you can see uh, to put in between my pages so that I don't get paint on other pages and this has come in very handy lots of times let's see so ah. <laughs> oh it's probably going to be really loud and crinkly I'm sorry about that uh, but I just slip it under if you haven't watched my journal videos I just slip it under so that if I'm painting on the background all the access it excess not access all the excess gets onto the wax paper and you just keep using it and using it and using it until I typically use it until it's so crusty that the flakes of paint are falling off and getting into my paint and making all sorts of patterns on my page that I don't particularly want uh, but they're very handy so I usually keep two sheets one for each side of the page then another thing that's handy is some sort of cloth or um, paper towel something to mop up messes and to help dry off your brush in between getting water out of your water jar. Another thing that's handy is a heat gun, but I don't feel like you need to go out immediately and buy a heat gun. If uh, you're watching this, wanting to start art journaling, you don't need one straight away. But if you are going to do a lot of art journaling, it is very handy. So this is one that I, this is one of the first crafty things that I bought uh, from stamping up and this was before I did scrapbooking so this guy would probably be maybe 10 no more than that maybe 11 no probably 10 years old 
yeah, 10 or so years old. And uh, it's really handy because it dries your page really quickly. I know you can get super like industrial ones from uh, like, uh, hardware stores as well. A hairdryer could also help. If you are going to just get a hairdryer, I would suggest uh, maybe not one that you also use for your hair because as you can see, it gets a little bit painty sometimes if you're a bit of a splatterer. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it is handy to have a designated heating thing to dry your stuff. Uh, next up, oh, okay, this is one that I am very passionate about. Paint pens. I freaking love them. So I have, let's see if I can grab this. You're on a tripod at the moment and everything I want is behind the tripod, which isn't great planning. Uh, but I have this box with all sorts of paint pens in it. I have a few more that I have to restock. Uh, but paint pens are something that are so delicious to use in your art journals. It's fun for mark making. I love to outline things. You can also, in a recent video, I just scribbled onto some uh, plastic packaging that I had and then added some water and used it like a paint. They're so handy. And I think every art journaler needs oh this isn't even black i thought i grabbed black but it's yellow ah okay we're just oh here's one every art journaler needs a white paint pen and a black paint pen i feel like these are non-negotiable because they come in handy so much and they can really make your pages just pop let's see if i can find a page that has some Pen on it. Of course, I picked up the journal that doesn't have paint pen in it. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's not paint pen, but it's, it's you get the idea. So all of these black stenciled shapes I outlined with a white pen, and it just without doing that, the page looked a lot murkier and it just looked a bit flat. And then by adding the white, it just popped it. Uh, so I'm a huge believer in black and white paint pens. I think they're very handy. They can come in all different sizes. I think it's nice to, oh, it's the yellow again, black. <laughs> uh, I think it's nice to have like a, a thick one and a thin one. So if you can grab one of those for your stash, I think they're very handy. Then you come to the problem of, but there's all other colors. Which color should I get? That color's pretty, but should I get the thin, the medium, the medium thick, the super thick, the extra ultra thick? You can go down and spend a lot of money on paint pens. Uh, I would recommend, because I love them so much, <laughs> if you like paint pens, grab yourself a black and white, without doubt, and then pick two colours or three colours that you love using. So for me, pink and blue are kind of just my go-to colours, and red, uh, and even, I know you're gonna, if you're an OG inklet, you'll be like, mm, but I've been liking yellow paint pens like recently. Not this, this is a bit fluoro, but just a, just a regular old yellow. Uh, but pick two or three colors that you love and maybe buy them in two different sizes. So you could buy a thinner one and then a thicker one. Give them a go, see what you like. You might find that you wish you had thicker sizes because every time you use the thin one, you have to go over it out an outline a few times and you make it thick anyway. You might find that the thick is too thick and you want to write things, so you need a thinner one. Have a little bit of an experiment, but you don't need all of the paint pens and all of the paint sizes and all of the painty paint paint. Just a couple, but they are very handy and they're nice. I also love to use these in scrapbooking too. I forgot to add that to my yesterday's video, but I do like paint pens and scrapbooking. Then, oh, this is another one. Pen pens, not paint pens, but pen pens. I, there are so many different types of pens out there. It's a bit overwhelming and ridiculous at times. Uh, so I tend to stick to gel pens and they can smudge. And if you're impatient like me, then they can be your worst enemy in uh, art journaling because if your background paint isn't dry enough or if you've got glue on your page and you go over it with this, you can pretty much say goodbye to the pen. It might not work for a while. Uh, but I use a Pilot G207 
and my absolute favourite white gel pen of all time is the Univore Signo Broad gel pen and it's a thicker one uh, and I know there's a lot of people who have bought these and not had success with them. I feel like there was a bad batch and I feel like some one of the, my subscribers told me that they contacted the company, did they? I'm pretty sure they did over on my other channel somewhere. Uh, but I have bought some recently in the last year and they've worked beautifully. I have bought some maybe the year before that and I had dodgy batch after dodgy batch and they just didn't work, they kept skipping. So if you have tried it before and had problems with skipping, maybe try a new one. They're only about, this one was $4.95. Uh, so if you can try them again because a white gel pen is really handy for outlining things or for, let's see if I can actually find something. Well this is down here. This text down here is with my other favourite black pen which is a Food Ball 1.5 by, are they Pilot? Or are they Pentel? Pentel or Pilot? I can't remember. Oh no it's not. It's O-H-T-O. -O. It's none of the above. Uh, it's a Food Ball. F-U-D-E. B A W L, and they're not permanent, so don't do permanent, don't do watery, painty things over the top, or even a coat of um, gesso or matte gel medium over the top because it will activate it and it will go all smudgy. But they're really nice to write with. Uh, there, and then let's find if I can find another one. Do, 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 do. Well, on this page I have used the white gel pen to do some writing here and outline and then a thick black paint pen uh, to do some writing over here so black and white pens are something that are very what's the word I'm looking for very multifaceted in your crafting that's not the word I'm looking for but it, it kind of works I also like a permanent marker uh, just a skinny one sometimes it's nice to write with that if you want a permanent um, coverage of your pen and it's also quite nice to sometimes write on glossy things with so a skinny permanent marker if you've got one lying around another thing that I love is the Stabilo all pencil and I use this in a couple of recent videos uh, so this is a it's a water soluble pencil that can write on paper glass plastic and metal and I love to do outlines and then activate it with a bit of water and it gives it a bit of a shadow. Uh, so that's a fun one to, to play with. That's one of my personal must-haves. And then let's go on to the mediums now. So like I said, it all depends on what you put in your journal as to what you want to use. But these are my absolute must-haves. Number one is acrylic paints. I use them all the time and I have a mixture between I would say not designer but you know marketed art journal um, type paints so these are the dilutions ones but they can add up so these are in Australia they're anywhere from eight bucks to twelve dollars each sometimes and uh, yeah so they can they can add up very quickly I also like to use cheap paint from my local two dollar shop. Uh, this one was two dollars fifty, and the the quality of these paints isn't artist grade by any means. <laughs> um, but it is really fun to experiment with different colours that you might not uh, have, or uh, just have a bit of a play and not feel scared to use your supplies because they cost a lot of money and. You don't know how you'll replace them because they're not easy to get in your country or where you uh, you don't have any art stores physically near you so you have to buy them online so any sort of acrylic paint can work in your art journal it's just all about how you use it and i would suggest starting off with the primary colors so a red yellow a blue and black and white and then you can branch off from there because Red, yellow, blue can make so many different colours and you add white in and black, you can make all types of tints and shades 
and if you'd like more stuff on colors and things let me know i am hoping to do a class on uh, Miss media 101 so stay tuned for that at some point when i can find time to film classes without children around uh, but yes paint is very handy i also do have Oh, over there so I can't reach it but I do have a whole drawer of artist grade expensive 15 to 20 dollar a tube uh, acrylic paints as well which I sometimes use but depends what the mood I'm in is uh, another thing that I love are inks now if you've watched my videos for a long time so say probably this junk journal and before I used to love using spray inks. This was one of my first, I think it was an early video. Uh, I would use them to make backgrounds and looking at all of these makes me want to use them again because they were heaps of fun to play with and they're hiding here somewhere. They're in a box. I recently moved house a couple of months ago and they're in a box somewhere that I haven't uh, opened yet. But inks are something that are very fun to, to use and they can get very messy, but I like to get a bit inky. Uh, so there's lots of different inks available. I have had a lot of like the dilutions or the distress inks and then they are a lot more watery, uh, but the inks that I'm obsessed with at the moment are not like those, they're acrylic ink, so they're a lot thicker and they're opaque. Uh, they're by Liquitex again. I promise I'm not sponsored by Liquitex. If anyone from Liquitex is watching, please, it would be lovely, but <laughs> I'm not sponsored by them. Like I said, it's just the easiest thing for me to, to get where I am. Uh, but these are really fun. They come in a, like a dropper. Uh, and they're fun to play with. So they good fun but it, like I said it all depends on what you like uh, another thing that I love that you'll see in a lot of my videos and you guys know this if you watch them are my watercolors so watercolors are another thing that can be very pricey and you can buy them individually I watercolors are something that I need to learn more about or I need to branch out from my two little palettes that I use all of the time. That oh, was three, I have a big one as well. Uh, but I would be interested actually in the comments below if you love watercolors, please tell me your favorite types or brands of watercolors to buy the individual ones of or uh, if you buy palettes, uh, let me know because I'd be interested to add a few. I've heard great things about Daniel Smith. Is that, yeah, I think that's it and I've heard they're quite pricey so I would like your opinions first before I venture out and buy any uh, but watercolor palettes are great for a long long time I used a really cheap $15 one from the kids section in office works if you watched old videos it was the rectangle one that had a million different little circles on it that worked great for a while it's quite chalky compared to these but it did the job I had fun with it so that's the main thing uh, but watercolor is really a uh, fun thing to play with next up where do I put them under ooh, under this precariously balanced pile of things, things. Uh, you should see both sides of me are just it's like I'm sitting here and then it just goes <laughs> into a diagonal of stuff piled on top of each other but that's okay because we're on YouTube and we're just looking at this part. We're just ignoring those for now. My next thing that I love are background stamps. Mm, they make me happy. They're very easy to accumulate as well. But background stamps, you could use any stamp as a background stamp, but I see background stamps as more of a pattern. Uh, and as you can see, I don't really clean my stamps. I'm, I'm not an expert on stamping. I'm a bit naughty when it comes to stamping, but things that I could use as a background. So uh, text, I love text stamps, and then patterns like dots or diamonds or circly bits, anything that you can use to add a little extra something to the background, even like flowers. Uh, so I have this little container 
that I keep in my top drawer. There's a few others that go behind it as well. And I don't put them on a like, stamp block or anything. I just use them like this so that I can get more of a organic shape of the stamp and I don't have like a block of text in the background. And I use them with permanent ink. Uh, typically I use stays on which is hiding from me right now, um, but I need to get a new black ink. So if you have a favorite black permanent ink, let me know what that is as well. Next up is a brayer. And this is my brayer. Uh, it's really fun to just play with. And I used these in high school uh, when I did art, but then I only rediscovered them a little while ago when I found jelly plate printing which I love jelly plates and oh, I love jelly plates so much. Uh, and I do use them a lot to make painted papers with. Um, but yeah, so this is when I rediscovered the brayer. And essentially it's just a roller that you can roll paint on with. I like to use it with my jelly plate, but I also just like to use it in the background to make some really cool patterns with acrylic paint. All right, we're almost at the end, peeps. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> uh, ooh, this next one's a fun one. Stencils. I love stencils. I need to go see Stencils Anonymous because I have quite a few stencils and I coordinate them in different categories in my big binder. Uh, I do have a video on my Patreon showing how I sorted all of my stencils. And... Uh, if you want more information about that but stencils are very fun to buy and very fun to use however I do feel like I have maybe five favorites that I use repeatedly that star one it's just constantly in my video so I apologize for that but I just really like it and I, it makes me happy so I, I use it a lot uh, but stencils are great fun and I, you can get them in all different sizes. So these are like 12 by 12. I typically don't wash off my acrylic paint. Uh, I do sometimes, but sometimes I don't. If you're using texture paste, definitely, definitely clean your stencil afterwards. All right, just got the phone call that the toddler is on his way home from the grandparents. So let's do these last couple of things nice and quickly. Oh, we've only got three to go. All right. Next up is collage items. Now this is a broad kind of category, but I love to collage my backgrounds. Uh, so things that I love to use are painted paper. So this is some jelly paper, jelly print paper on jelly paper. I love to use printed tissue paper in my backgrounds as well. I also love to use serviettes or napkins, whatever you may call them. Let's try and get my lights to not shine glare on it there we go uh, I love to use those and uh, I have lots of videos using those as well just be sure to separate the serviette apart so that you only have the top layer uh, paper like wrapping paper that's really fun this is a text one that I recently got uh, and washi tape I put washi tape in collage items because I feel like I use it like a collage piece of paper so collage items are really fun to play with. You can add anything to that. You could do magazine paper. You could do scrapbook paper. You could do your kids' artwork that you've torn up into beautiful little strips so that you can preserve it forever but not have a pile this big of painted finger painting. Uh, <laughs> anything that you can collage in the background it can get a little bit crazy, though. It can overflow. And in a previous video, or maybe that was a Patreon cleaning up my craft room video, uh, I talked about my collage papers and how overwhelming it can get. So now I have them separated into two main categories. So I have painted papers, which I would put things like, actually not two, there's a couple of categories. I have a container for painted papers. I have a container for what I call neutral papers, which are book pages, note paper, graph paper, um, any sort of just like kind of plain Paper. I would kind of put this in neutral papers. Then I have a little container for serviettes. So it just has serviettes in it. And then I have another container for tissue paper and vellum. So they go together. So it can get a bit overwhelming how to categorize it. Um, but I feel like 
if you only have a small container of things you can rummage through it but as it grows it can get a bit overwhelming <laughs> next up focal images so I like to use all sorts of different things in my journals as you guys know if you watch my videos I'm this video might be watched by subscribers but it might be watched by new people so I'm kind of talking like you haven't seen my videos before if you've just stumbled upon this video um, but I know a ton of you most of you already know what I do and what I what my must-haves are uh, I love to use magazine images in my art journals uh, you might like to use stamps as your focal image you might like to use photos as your focal image I do have a lot that I used um, let's see so here I used a little photo as my focal image and, in, and an embellishment. When was he ever that small, peeps? If you've been around for a while, when was he ever that small? <laughs> uh, I used photos a lot of the time, or this was one of my inky printables that I used, and, oh, that's the Stabilo All Pencil around the outside too. It just gives it a bit of a shadow. Uh, or a magazine image. This is uh, some washi tape. We've got all sorts of things in here. I really should flip through my journals again because it's nice to look at old techniques I used to do. Uh, this is a serviette. So just all sorts of focal images. I typically go with magazine images, more like fashion-y magazine um, peeps and my personal photos as well. And then the last thing that I is a must-have for me are quotes. So that could be uh, quotes that I've found on Pinterest, quotes that I've read in a book, something that someone has said to me like a piece of anonymous advice like you know I can't think of one at the moment but my favorite is a man riding by on a horse wouldn't be able to say it <laughs> um, but some sort of like quote I started a quotes journal which isn't on my journal shelf where are you quotes journal I did have a TN that I a junk journal TN that I created on patreon and then did a process video filling it with quotes and then I made another one I saw it the other day I must have put it in a safe spot uh, but I've, I like to use them on pages because it gives me an opportunity to journal without having to spend too much time thinking of what I want to say I can find a quote that reflects how I'm feeling at that moment or what a certain focal image makes me feel there are so many other mixed media art journaling must-haves that you might have let me know in the comments what yours are some others that aren't my personal must 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 must-haves so i don't take them away all the time uh things like alcohol ink are really fun you can have some gouache i can hear my three-year-old coming home he might come and say hello pencils um ink pens normal pens silicon brushes all sorts of bits and pieces of things. I'll get Arch, just come say hello. Hi peeps. All right, Archie's here. How was your day? Good. Yeah? And I brought this back. Ooh, what's that? That's a screwdriver. A screwdriver? That's awesome. Can't try and pull these. Do you remember what these are? Kick. I don't know. I don't know, it's called a paint pen. Okay, can, can I pull with these? Yes, you can. All right. We're going to go and do some drawing together. And thanks art for watching. Drawing. Yes, art drawing. Can painting, you... drawing. Painting, drawing, all the things. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up that, if you enjoyed it. That, that's like a bird feather. It is, isn't it? It's a pen that's like a bird feather. Whoa. You do it like that? Yeah, you take the lid off like that. Cool. All right, can you say, give this video a thumbs up? Yay! <laughs> and thanks everyone for joining in on the Inky Jin Marathon. Uh, I've really enjoyed putting it together and I'm hoping to make it a regular occurrence now. Get back into the groove. I did it a few years ago before this guy came along, um, but I haven't done it since. And it really means a lot to see all of your comments and you watching my videos and enjoying them. All right, guys, I will see you very soon. In a moment. In a moment.